Hey everybody, testing out the audio. How do I sound? I'll be on in just a moment. Um, but as I'm getting set up, if you'd like to, we're doing a giveaway today. Uh, you can win 200, or 200, <laughs> not $200. <laughs> $20 to the Club Crochet store. Uh, I have a little form that's at the, uh, it's at the top of the, the chat and in the description of the video. Um, and I'm basically just asking for some advice on some merch that I'm working on. Uh, I'm just looking to see what you have, uh, if you have any good ideas for it. Um, but yeah, let me know how I sound. I'll be on in just a moment. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye. I can see the chat, okay? I know, I know you're gonna start saying pickle when I come on. So don't you, don't you go pickling me. I'm watching you. All right. I didn't close the door, but you know what? We're gonna survive and it's all gonna be good. Jimbo's already in this room anyhow. Hello everybody, welcome to the live stream. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, today's live stream is gonna be a little bit different, a little bit weird, kinda. And also I think just like a, the first part of a two-parter. Um, because I think this is gonna take more than one live stream. So I think we're gonna go for like, try to go for at least like two hours today, uh, crocheting this. What we're gonna be making today is we are making, look at that, there we go. We're making a volcano for all my dinosaurs. Uh, specifically, we're gonna kinda try to make something about maybe this big, maybe a little bit smaller than this. This is our Bonimal bag, our Monimal that I keep all my bonimals in. Um, but I needed something similar for the uh, the dinosaur. So I wanna make something kinda similar, but it's a volcano instead of like a little face like this. But I still obviously wanna make it a pickle. I, 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 you made me say pickle. You made me. <laughs> you, you, you got me. <laughs> I want it to look like a volcano, not a pickle. All right. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I said that. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, we're going to be making a bag today. Now the pattern that I'm going to be using, uh, I'm going to be using a pattern that I have on the website for a bag. Uh, it's just at um, clubcrochet.com slash bag. I'll put that link on the screen. But uh, let's just switch, oh wait, before I switch cameras, I uh, am doing a giveaway today. So if you would like to, I'm going to put this right here for right now. Uh, if you would like to get a chance to win a $20 gift card to the Club Crochet store, 
Um, I put a form in the description and it's currently pinned in the chat right at the top of the chat, wherever that be. Um, I will uh, probably be removing that in just a second. But what I'm basically looking for is uh, some feedback on some merch that I'm working on, which you can see I'm wearing uh, the first example right here. We're getting merch made for Jimbo, my kitty cat, holding a ball of yarn. Here, look, I made it as a mug too to give that a shot. Looks pretty cute. Um, I'm looking for some feedback, like what kind of merch uh, this should be, um, what like what shirt sizes you are to like see what kind of shirt sizes to order, uh, things like that. So feel uh, uh, feel free to enter that giveaway, um, and I will announce a winner at the end of the live stream. So that's that. Now let's switch it to the other thing. By the way, today I'm drinking uh, tea, black tea. I need her to wake up a little bit, you know? Um, okay, let's switch over to this right there. Wow, that timing was pretty good, right? This is like volcano music, if you ask me. Okay. <laughs> I'm not crazy, all right? Who said that? Anyhow, hey guys. All right, so today we're gonna to be making a volcano. Now I do not have the crochet pattern yet. Um, I will be putting it on the website. Uh, Cooper in the chat, say hello to Cooper. Hi Cooper, is helping us out. He's a moderator today. He's gonna to be uh, helping keep track of the pattern. And then after these live streams, I think it'll probably take two, maybe three live streams to complete this pattern. Um, we'll put it on the website. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, but if you would like to uh, crochet along with me, I'm going to be using that bag pattern as a uh, base pattern. You can find it at clubcrochet.com slash bag. Um, it should be in the description of the video uh, for where that is. If it's not, uh, just go to the website, look up, do a little search for bag, you'll find it. Uh, as far as colors go, I'm using, uh, I think it's worsted weight. It feels like it's worsted weight. Um, but today we're using wool yarn. I wanted to use something a little bit more um, elastic, I guess. We're going to be using a, a brown for the majority of the volcano. And then we're going to use this like kind of like um, kind of like a lava. I'm going to say it's a lava orange, blood orange, maybe. Uh, and that's going to be used for the lava. You'll also need a little bit of white for the eyes and then some black yarn for the mouth. Uh, and I'm probably going to do a tongue, but that'll probably be near the end. Because this pattern is going to be a little bit bigger than, uh, like, I'm going to be using a little bit larger of a crochet hook this time. So I'm going to be using a size I9 crochet hook. Normally I use a size G, so there is that. Um, what else? Uh... Yeah, so that's all the things you'll need. Oh, and I'm gonna use a piece of cardboard here. You can see I have a cardboard and the scissors because I wanna cut out a big round base for it so it has a very flat base. Um, that's the idea there. Okay, well, I think that's just about it for what you're going to need for this pattern. You also might need some safety eyes. So I brought out my little um, thing of safety eyes. That's gonna be for the eyes there, but I don't think we'll need it in this video. We'll probably need it later on. Um, today we're going to try to crochet the eyes and get about at least halfway on the body of the volcano before uh, the live stream is finished. But we're going to aim for a 5 o'clock finishing time, so about two hours stream. Um, okay, I think that's about it for what you need. Um, uh, t -t 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 uh, if you'd like to support this channel, here's how you can do so. Um, if you'd like to support this channel, it would be really cool if you did. The first way is free and cheap and easy. All you have to do is like this video down below. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not. Hit the bell icon so you get notified when we do these live streams. Uh, we do live streams like this all the time. We do, uh, I'm coming out with new crochet patterns all the time. Stuff like that. Uh, it's a great way to help support this channel. If this video gets 350 likes, I'll do another giveaway next live stream. So I'm upping it again. So last live stream was 300 likes. This live stream, 350. So if this video gets 350 likes, we'll do another giveaway next live stream. Um, because today we're doing that giveaway uh, and you can enter the form. Uh, I'll keep it in the chat just for a little bit longer until I finish my spiel. Um, if you'd like to help support this channel monetarily, uh, the best way to do that is with the Club Crochet membership. Members get early access to future patterns. They get access to the full library of tutorials, which I add new ones to every single month. Uh, this month, actually, this pattern is going to be up probably by 
the end of the weekend, we'll have the plesiosaur pattern uh, up. I just, I finished the recording. Everything's all ready to go. I even have the PDF done, but uh, I just need to get it onto the website. Um, so it should be up by Monday. So if you are a Club Crochet member, you'll get access to the new plesiosaur pattern by Monday. Um, and I'm working on a raptor pattern. Whoop, that looks like this. Um, I'm actually looking for feedback right now. So if you'd like to give me feedback on the Raptor, you can go to clubcrochet.com slash Raptor. But if you have a membership, you can get access to all my patterns, all my tutorials, uh, and it's a great way to help support this channel. You can either get, even get monthly kits mailed to your door each month with all the materials that you need to make whatever we're making that month. This month, uh, we are I'm extending the membership the Club Crochet Kit membership sign up until Monday because that's when the kits go out. So if, you, if you'd like to sign up for the Club Crochet Pro Kit, you do have till Monday. Um, this is for the September kit. You're gonna either make a plesiosaur or a brontosaurus and it has enough yarn and eyes and everything and stuffing to make an additional raptor. So you'll make a little raptor. It actually probably has enough for making two raptors. Uh, and you can choose between a brontosaurus and a plesiosaur, whichever kit you want. But each kit makes, uh, you can make the other design with it. So it's kind of cool and you get all the designs with the kit as well. Um, that's with the Club Crochet Pro Kit. You can also purchase merch and kits in the store. It's a great way to help support the channel. Um, I have a bunch of different pins and stuff, and soon we'll have the this uh, the little Jimbo pin. So that's gonna kind of be cool too. Okay, what size hook? Uh, in a size I nine. It's a little blurry. There you go. I think that's in focus. A size I nine. 5.5 millimeter crochet hook is what I'll be using in this video. Um, why don't we clean up our workstation and get started and say hi to the chat. Hi to the chat. How's everybody doing? Um, oh, that's right. There is one other way you can help support and that is with a donation, uh, a tip, if you will. Um, if you'd like to tip, you can go to clubcrochet.com slash tip. There's a link in the description. Uh, or you can tip with a super chat. There's a little dollar icon next to the chat icon. Uh, and that's a great way to help just support this channel in general. And if you do tip, I'll put something out for you during the live stream. And I think I've decided if you tip more than... I'm going to let this first one go, but... If you tip more than $15, we're going to up it a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to put something out right here. This is uh, my, by the way, this is my office right now. So if you tip for $15, I'm going to permanently put, well, at least semi-permanently put out something pretty big for you in the background uh, so that you can have something up like in my office. So like I'll actually like look at it all the time and it won't go down until this whole uh, ledge is filled up with Amy Gurumi and then we'll take a big group picture and say thank you and then we'll clear it out and do it again. Uh, I just thought it'd be kind of fun. Um, yeah, so if you support for a decent amount, I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Louis say pickle. No. Oh wait, dang it. God. Um, okay, so uh, we actually already did get a few tips. Oh my god, we got three already. Okay. So the first tip is from Cooper. Oh my gosh, Cooper, you are a champ, you know? Uh, Cooper supported for 30 bones. That's a, <laughs> heck yeah. Um, oh shoot, I meant to find, you know what? We're gonna put this one out for Cooper because I wanna put this one out anyhow and this way Cooper can, can know that he was the reason that it's out. We're gonna put out Sunshine, the sunflower. Isn't it beautiful? Perfect for, st it's still summer, right? Kind of. This is gonna be out for you, Cooper. We're gonna put it right, uh-oh. Doesn't really, here, you can bend it. You can bend it a little bit like that. Hopefully it gets enough sunshine. There we go. Oh, that's great. Yes, that's great. So this thing's, hopefully we're gonna fill it all the way up eventually. Um. Yeah, someone get him a trophy. He d he's got two trophies now. You got Freddy and Sunshine there. And then also for Johnny, um, thank you so much. They said, oh yeah, that's right. You got your wisdom teeth out. Well, congratulations on getting your wisdom teeth out. I hope you're having an okay time. Uh, but to say thanks, let's put something out in the background for you. Let's see. Let's see, what do we got? What do we got? Something big and beautiful. Something big and beautiful. 
about how about no that's creepy oh ooh, how about this guy i can't remember what this is exactly but we'll put out this for you um he's kind of like a weird little creature that i made like a while ago but he's so fuzzy and cute and you know what johnny I know you're in a wisdom teeth like kind of like whoa uh probably mindset but that means you might come up with a really good name for it so if you got a good name or uh kind of like what this creature is here's another I'll open it. uh let me know and we'll give it a name and we'll put it right in between these two like this right that's pretty good you can kind of see it yeah, it'd be nice to have a little camera like right here or something so that you could like just see what's going on in this thing. But yeah, give it a name. I've got a little piece of paper and pen out so I can put little uh, name cards and stuff. Um, and then the last support was for Tina. Tina, thank you so much. Give Jack the money so he has some food and say hi to Jules and the cats. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure to give Jack that money. Thank you so much for your support, Tina. Um, okay, let's get back to it. Uh, and obviously, let me know if we get a tip that I don't notice because for some reason the sound isn't working right for the tips. I need to, I need to fix that a little bit. Um, okay, so I think the first thing that I'm gonna do, actually, well, no, no, no. The first thing we're gonna do is start just crocheting the base of the volcano. Um, I'll keep the, I'm gonna keep this. Where am I putting these scissors? Do you know? Do you know where I'm putting these scissors? because I don't know. Well, I'm gonna put it with the cardboard that I had, but I don't know where I put that cardboard. Um, where did I put, oh, here it is. Okay, so we're gonna put this with the cardboard just so that we don't forget that it exists. Take a sip of uh, tea because we got stew. And now we'll get crocheting. Okay, we also don't need the eyes yet. Um, all right, so I'm gonna start with my brown yarn. This is just gonna be what, what the majority of the volcano is. I kind of wanted to do a slightly darker brown, but I didn't. I don't have any like on hand, so this is the brown we're using, and that's okay. Um, I don't think this is gonna be the first volcano that I make. I mean, the only volcano that I make. It is gonna be the first one, but I want to do a few of these. I think uh, just because I think this is gonna be really cool and a really good. Um, I have a feeling this will be a really cool design for Lava Run, my new game that I'm working on uh, that is like about dinosaurs escaping a volcano. Uh, if you wanna test out this game, by the way, I put a link in the description for where you can test it out. We're still looking for another like 50 testers. So if you are interested in testing a new game that you can crochet your pieces for, uh, it's totally free to test it out. I just need feedback um, to see how the game works, if it works well. Um, this is just the first wave and then I'll do another wave of testing where I'm gonna update it with like one player, like uh, single player rules and adding some additional things and changing some designs and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, if you would like to give me feedback, uh, you can uh, in the uh, description, you can find that. Also, let me change, let me get rid of this thing real quick. Unpin that, there we go. Here, you know what, let me try this out actually. Test. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, I didn't, oh yeah, there we go. There we go, boom, hold on. Boom. And then I'll pin that message. I just learned about pinning messages on the chat, so it's kind of cool. There we go. That's where you can uh, check out the Lava Run game. But yes. Oh, Cooper. Cooper beat me to it, even. God, Cooper's such a champ. All right, so we got four. Um, I'm using the bag pattern on the website as the base design. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. It's actually a pretty shockingly easy pattern. It's just a lot of crocheting. So this is just going to be a lot of, a lot of crocheting. Um, I'm thinking of soon changing the style. One, two, three, four, eight of these live streams uh, because I have just such a cool room here that you can't see. Uh, hold on, I'm having a hard time getting into this stitch right there. 
Um, so, yeah, so the first, I have a feeling, by the way, Cooper, if you are keeping track of the pattern, the first, uh, I'm going to keep the first probably six rounds at least the same as the bag pattern. So we're just going to continuously be increasing it up. We started with eight single crochets into a magic loop, and now I'm doing an increase into each stitch all the way around to go up uh, to 16, and then I'll do a single crochet, then an increase. So yeah, it'll slowly be ramping up in size as we go. But yeah, the first the first bit is gonna be the exact same. And I will likely uh, be doing a little bit of alterations here and there throughout this pattern. But I'll make sure to let you know as I go. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is I am planning on trying out a different, um, so a couple things. First off, I'm planning on changing the days and times that I do live streams. So right now, we were doing them on Sundays at one. Uh, I kind of a little bit want my weekends. Like, I feel like Sundays, sometimes I have to like miss it out because like I have a wedding that I have to go to that weekend. So I'm thinking of changing it to being Tuesdays and Thursdays doing live streams. Thursdays for sure. Like I'll do a live stream every Thursday at 3 p.m. just like this one. Um, but then on Tuesdays, maybe also doing a live stream but doing it on uh, like either doing a gaming live stream or, or just like changing the, the, um, the system up a bit. Maybe not doing a live stream here on Club Crochet if I do gaming, but on my Louis Loops channel. But basically pushing Tuesdays and Thursdays to be either live streams or I'm recording a pattern or something like that. But always, always be um, creating something new for the channel. So I'll keep you, uh, you updated on that. I definitely think that like this volcano pattern, for example, um, I knew that I was like, man, this pattern is going to get so big eventually that it's going to be hard to get it in the camera, right? So then I was like, okay, well, what if I did it where I'm just like sitting, crocheting, and you see like me instead of seeing like just my hands? Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm still thinking it through a little bit. Uh, but let me know what you think about that. Also, let me know what you think about the uh, Jimbo design. I think it's super cute and I'm really excited about it, but I just hope that you feel that way too. And if you don't, uh, let me know why, I guess. <laughs> um, did you get the name I've been trying to say? Oh, j oh, you've been trying to say, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Wompert. Oh, he's totally a Wompert. Totally a Wompert. Let me write that down. Also, is the music too loud? It feels like it's loud. But, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I entered the giveaway, but I have to go to work. No, 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 you can still win, for sure. You don't have to be present during the giveaway. I'll email you if you won the giveaway. So don't worry about being present. And the music is fine, okay, I'm glad. All right, Wompert, how am I spelling that? I'm guessing it's, yeah, cool. W-L-N. And then I'm gonna put on the back here, who donated. Perfect. There we go. It's going right here. Oh, it's such a good name for him. We got Freddy, we got Wompert. I'm not letting you rename Sunshine uh, Cooper, but uh, I will put a little thing that out for you. You can give it a middle name. You can give Sunshine a middle name if you want. There's a Jimbo pin, not yet. Uh, check out the giveaway. It'll explain a little bit. I'm, I'm working, I have a new design for a Jimbo pin and t-shirt and mug and all this other stuff that I'm working on. Um, but I want feedback to see what merch specifically I should get for it before I actually come out with it. Um, it'll probably take about a month or so before the merch is ready for purchase. The merch is ready for perch. But, uh, but yes, I'm working on a Jimbo pin. I've got a few different pins that I'm working on. Um, basically what I'm trying to set it up with is doing um, 
in uh, next year to do a pin of the month club that you can sign up for in addition to the membership. So you can be like, I want a membership, but I also want to get monthly pins. Uh, and then you'll get uh, a new pin every single month. We'll do like another pin. Um, and so I'm kind of like trying to get a, like a, a catalog of pins to give, oh, to do for that. So, so I've got a few ones in the works uh, right now, but the Jimbo one is just too cute to wait. And I just, I just want it. I just, I just want those pins so bad. Um, but also, you know, I'm thinking pins, t-shirts, mugs. Um, I don't know. Any, if, if you got any other ideas for what kind of merch I should do, uh, let me know. Maybe a little bags. Actually, that'd be really good, right? Like a little, um, like a crafting bag that you can keep your project clean, like craft projects with. That might be kind of cool. How do I make my pins? Uh, so I make my pins from a website. Uh, I, I order like a bunch of pins at once from a site. Um, there's a few different sites that you can use. Um, I think the one that I've been, that's been most useful for me has been a website called Wizard Pins. Um, they're pretty good, and if you have any mistakes or anything, they're, they're really good at fixing things up and stuff. Uh, and they're pretty quick. But there are a lot of different websites like that. So, yeah. How long would this live stream be? Yeah, exactly what Diamond Tech said, about two hours. I'm going to try to finish it up around five. Uh, and I think this is going to be an ongoing live stream. So I'm going to do this again next Thursday, uh, same time, same place. And we're going to continue working on this volcano. And I think I'll just like keep working on it until we have it done. Um, but yeah, in September, we're also going to be doing a lot of dinosaur live streams um, for the monthly kit and stuff like that also. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so by the way, right now, if you are trying to crochet along with me, but I'm going way too quick. Sorry. Not sorry, really. I mean, kind of sorry. Uh, <laughs> I'm on, uh, I'm currently on, I think, round six. One, two, three. Oh no, no, I'm on round, I'm on round five of the bag pattern, uh, and I'm basically making it uh, increase up to 40 stitches right now. But then I'm going to after, I think I'm going to keep increasing it up after uh, these these rounds though. So it's going to be pretty big, is my goal. I mean, I guess I don't want it to be that big, but you know, it's a volcano. It's got to be somewhat big. Yeah, a project bag, right? That would be a good idea. Okay, I'm glad you think that. Club crochet project bag. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a lot more of project bags too. Oh, a stitch marker. I. that's not a bad idea. Especially with the tail of the Jimbo. That's actually a pretty good idea. Yes. Um, yes, pay one. 370 you absolutely can sign up to play test the game uh, outside of the US um, all you need to do is print out the game so you don't need to it there's no shipping or anything like that um, you totally can test out the game uh, without being in the United States or anything like that you can be wherever you want um, I'm just looking for feedback you know I'm just looking for people to, to let me know what they do and don't like about the game um, and the link for testing the game out should be at the top of the chat right now uh-oh, the great Jimbo stirs. I gotta fly. Mm, I'm watching you fly. Do watch it, bub. All right, one, two, three, four, and then an increase. Okay. This pattern's already getting a little floppy. Which, I mean, I was kind of expecting, you know, a little bit of flop. But uh, it might be nice to have some kind of structural integrity. Because I think as I go up, it's going to just like flop down. But I guess, you know, once we fill it with dinosaurs, it probably won't be a problem. Hopefully. We'll see. Ooh, Autumn asks, Louie, are you a human? No, uh, that's a great question. No, I'm not a human. I am a from a uh, plant. Well, I guess in English or in, a, yeah, it in human English, it would be like, Planet X four five eight seven seven ten, um, and it's actually a really nice planet. You guys should totally check it out um, once you guys figure out your warp drives and stuff. 
Um, but once you figure that out, uh, you should totally check that planet out. It's really cool. A lot of, um, like, the sun is just a brilliant red. Uh, it probably will burn your flesh off uh, if you're not in, uh, in the right, you know, uh, human suits. I don't know what you guys call those. Um, but for my kind, uh, it's actually really nice. It's a really nice uh, uh, feeling. <laughs> But thanks for asking. I can't believe you're the first one to uh, guess that I'm not a human. I'm shocked. Five <laughs> and six. Where is it? Um, I get, you know, directions are kind of hard when you're in space, especially because everything's moving. But it's about 15 to 18,000 light years Do Well, if we're spinning that, do like that way. Yeah, so if you just go that way for about for about 16, what I say, like 16,000 light years, um, you could probably get there. Yeah. Yeah, ch definitely check that planet off, uh, out. Uh, it's very cool. <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm on my next round. All right, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So I'm increasing it up even more now. Uh, I just finished round six of the bag. I'm gonna skip round seven because round seven's just regular single crochets in each round. But um, my goal for this volcano is it's gonna get a really, um, I think I wanted to get about this big of a base. You know what, actually, this is probably a good time to cut the circle out. So, All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this cardboard and I'm just gonna cut a circle out and then try to get this to be as big as the cardboard. And this way we can have like a strong base of the volcano so that it'll sit upright. That's the idea. Um, so I'm just gonna cut this in as best of a circle as I can. Just eye eyeballing it. Hey, you know what? So far, that's that's pretty good. Keep going. Now that I've jinx now that I've successfully jinxed my circle cutting abilities. You know, that's not that's not terrible. That's pretty good. All right, so that's what we're gonna go with. I'll clean that up later. All right, so now we've got a circle that we're trying to get it as big as this circle is. So we need to just keep doing this increasing out. Um, and what I'm basically doing in the pattern is I'm just doing single crochets until I get to the increase and then I'm increasing that up. And I'll just keep doing that until it gets as big as I can. And I think I'm gonna try to do some kind of sewing not like really sewing it together, but like doing a little bit of stuff on this so that it stays on the inside of a volcano maybe. I don't know, we'll figure it out. There's a lot of different options that we could do as we go. But I'm not even counting my rounds or my stitches at this point. All I'm doing is I'm continuously crocheting, doing single crochets around until I find an increase. Right here's an increase. And then I'm doing another increase in the corner of that. Uh, and then I will let you know, Cooper, how big and how many rounds I've done uh, once I get it to the size I need to. So this way we don't even need to really like count our stitches or figure any of that out. But I have a feeling we're going to get to about, um, well in the bag pattern it goes to 64. So at least that big because this yarn is a little bit smaller we might end up going a little bigger than that. but. Oh, man, maybe not. Maybe not. We'll see. We will see. That's uh, the music that is from my planet. Yeah. You guys gotta check out this room. You know what, maybe at the end of this live stream, 
I'll try to give you a little like miniature tour with this camera. I'll try. I'll try my ding dang darndest. I don't know if I'll be able to do much, but I'll give it a shot. Let's see. One, two. Three. How do I know English? Oh, well, on, on our planet, um, we are, uh, it's required in our classes to learn um, uh, 15,000 different languages. Yeah, you're supposed to learn at least 15,000 different languages. So um, English was, uh, yeah, was taught to me in my uh, 18th grade. Yeah. We, we age a lot slower than you, you fleshy peoples. Yes, we are going to come out with a pattern for the Monomal and the Volcano Bag. Um, the Monomal, I've just been taking my sweet, sweet time on because I'm a butthead. But, <laughs> but I am going to work on that. Oopsies, I missed an increase right here. So I'm going to go back. There we go. Hopefully I have enough of this yarn to make this whole bag. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go find more of this yarn. Yeah, 18th grade, yeah. Yeah, about, yeah. Blorfmore year. Blorfmore year of, of can cantory, canterary school. That's uh, basically, it's kind of like high school, but um, there's like three more schools after that because we, we just age a lot slower than you guys. Does my planet like Dungeons D&D? Do you mean Dungeons and Dragons or do you mean Dynamite and D Daredevils? Because we really like Dynamite and Daredevils. It's this really fun game where uh, people try to uh, jump over uh, 15,000 uh, square feet of dynamite. And if they miss, the dynamite explodes, everybody dies. It's really crazy. No one's di ever actually not succeeded. So the stakes could be a little bit higher, but... How do we print Lava Run? That's a good question. Okay, so the... Hold on, hold on. We have to give Jimbo a little bit of attention. Yes, hold on. Come here. Oh yeah, come here. Whoa. Jimbo requests an audience. Don't you? He was trying to take a nap. And look, now he's falling asleep in my arms. But this is, this is Jimbo. The great and powerful. Oh my god, he's literally falling asleep in my arms right now. He's... No, I'm not. Okay. You want freedom? Are you going to be a little butthead? Am I going to have to kick you out so you don't mess with my yarn? Are you just going to be really sweet and just stay, sit right there at my feet? Okay. Well, let's hope. Yes. We're gonna hope that he is gonna be a nice, good boy and not interrupt the live stream too much. He did cancel the live stream one time, uh, which was interesting. How difficult was it to learn 15,000 languages? Um, you know, it's, it's okay, it's not that bad. Um, a lot of it just gets uploaded. Uh, we have like a really nice system where we basically like sit and f sit is like a strong way to say it, but essentially sit in front of a um, a machine that kind of like and kind of like uh, essentially like uploads information to us. So yeah, we know a lot of things. Did I steal Jimbo from my planet? No, Jimbo is from a different planet altogether. Um, I'm actually completely unsure what planet Jimbo's from, but I'll tell you, he is unlike any creature I've ever met in my thousands of years of uh, exploration. Oh yeah, so how do you print Lava Run? So Lava Run, uh, you can, uh, once you sign up for the playtest, 
you'll get a PDF, and the PDF explains all the rules to the game. Um, it explains uh, where to provide your feedback for the game. And then at the very end of the PDF, there are, I think, like seven or eight pages. Hi, Jiminy. Jiminy's just pawing at my feet right now. Um, seven or eight pages of, uh, like, that you can, that you print out. Um, preferably on, like, a card stock, like a heavier paper if you can, but you can print it out on really whatever you want. And then, um, uh, and then you just cut out the game. So it cuts out the board, uh, and then you just tape the board together. Jumbo is licking my toes right now. Seriously, he's licking my toes. It's very ticklish. Um... And, ooh, get a bing bong. Someone's bing in my bong right now. Hold on. We gotta turn on Do Not Disturb. There we go. But yes. But yes. Oh, yes. I will do that. Okay. Let's see, how big is this? There we go. Okay, we're getting there. Just a little, like a few more rounds of increasing to go, I think. Jimbo can fly. Uh, it's more of like a hover, but yeah, something. It's kind of like flying. Yeah, he does. He does not like to do it though. He doesn't like to do it because he flies backwards, and so it's just kind of like awkward for him, I think. I didn't lie about my whole life. Not my whole life. <laughs> um, yeah, so you just, you print out the last, uh, like, seven or eight pages of the PDF, and then you cut it out, and that's how you can play the game. Uh, hopefully, eventually, the game will be, um, like, I kind of want to turn it into an app or something eventually, too, but... No, no, I can't fly or hover. No, no, no. I can't do that. No. Not since the accident. No. Jimbo was half fairy. Everything makes sense now. Bing, 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 bing. How's the music? Is it too loud? You just signed up and it didn't give you a PDF. Check your email. Um, you should get an email from me within the next few minutes. I think you should get an email about it. Um, I, I I tried to set it up like that. Uh, let me know at the by the end of this live stream. Let me know if you didn't get an email. You should though. It should it should be sent to you. Yeah, and it'd be multiplayer and a single player one. Yeah. Music is fine. All right, cool. Thank you. The ax I don't want to talk about it, Five Worlds Explorer. It was a terrible accident, and uh, it was very traumatic. I just don't want to talk about it, okay? The tea made me go crazy? No. It didn't. <laughs> Johnny said that her husband said no more pudding, so he's making you a smoothie instead. Be careful with the smoothie though. I don't think you can have seeds. So tell him to like be really careful about what he puts in that smoothie because seeds could really mess you up. I'm pretty sure. Um how long can we take to test the game? Um I'd like you I'd like to get uh as many tests in uh before i come out with the second version of the game so basically this version is like basically it's the beta version of the game um and the rules are pretty simple uh and then in october like in the beginning of october i'm gonna come out with a second wave of testing where i include some extra rules that i've made uh that i think will work uh and I'll make any changes to the game based on the feedback that I've gotten. 
uh, and I'm gonna include a new version, an, like another, basically like I have like four different extra rules to add to the game that shouldn't break it in any way, but I need to make sure that the base of the game is solid. How many, um, I need to know like how many cards to make of certain kinds. I need to know like, does the board look good? Cause I wanna redesign how everything looks. And, uh, and basically I just wanna make sure that the game works and is fun at its, at its core before I start putting in uh, new changes and stuff to it. Uh, so how far are we here? Okay, we're getting there. I think maybe like one or two more rounds of increasing should get us big enough. I do want it to be like a little bit smaller than it so that it really fits tight in there, but I don't want to stretch it out too much also. Okay. Oh, thoughts are going to uh, Sunshine's granddaughter. Hopefully she feels better, everybody. Keep her in your thoughts. Uh, she had to be taken to the ER. I hope she feels better soon. But yes, keep us updated, Sunshine. Yeah, it's kind of like a card game, uh, Sajito. Uh, it's kind of, it's like there's cards involved, except they're just like tiny cards. You know what? Hold on. I'll show you what the game kind of looks like. This is the board for the game printed out. So this is what you can print out, right? I'm just gonna fold it so that it's easier to show you on the screen. It's about, it's double the size. And then these are the cards for the game. And basically what you do in the game is you start on one of these and you slowly are trying to work your way to the beach. And then while that's happening, you have to like build lava behind you like that to like, and then try to like stop the lava from flowing. And you like have to continuously build lava and move across the board. And then there's special cards, like there's this card, which is the asteroid, which which you can use like on the corner. It, there's, all the rules are written down, but that's basically what the game looks like and what it looks like when you print it out. There's a, do, there's a bunch of different kinds of cards like this though. Some are, there's like some footprints that help you move and stuff like that. Currently the rules are built for a, um, like it's more competitive, you know, it's two to six players, but um, I'm working on a, a version of the game that's more cooperative instead of competitive and a version of the game that's single player, which uh, so you can play it by yourself if you want to. It's all very um, simple though. It's a very, very simple game. It's not like as like Stitched is very complicated compared to this game. So if you have played Stitched and you're like, well, that game is a lot. Um, this game is a lot more simple. Uh, games take, I think, about 20 minutes to maybe 40 minutes if you're really, if you're really stretching it. Um, so they're pretty quick games too. But I think it's pretty cool. What? Oh, that's an interesting. Oh, did I go away for a second? Oh, got it. Yeah, just to grab the thing. Got it. Um. Oh, I love that idea, leaf sauce. That's a fun idea. Um, but what what's the color used the most and the least in crochet? What is the color used the most and the least in crochet? I probably use the most. I probably use like a, a green. I probably use green the most or maybe purple. I really, just because I really like the color purple. But um, I make, you know, I make a lot of goblins and stuff, so I really like the color, like to use the color green. Uh, maybe brown too, I use a lot of brown. And then, what was your other question? Oh, the least. Probably black. I probably use the color black the least, because it's hard to crochet with, uh, and it's hard to use other colors with. So, yeah, those are probably my most and least used colors. Okay, so Leaf, um, I love your idea. I've actually had a, a similar-ish idea. Okay, so you know how I am, right? The, like, 
Lava Run is not the only game I've made. I've made Stitched, uh, and then I have like three or four other games that I'm working on simultaneously. One is about Krakens eating, uh, eating pirate ships. There's one about um, uh, burbs that they have different hats under them. I'm working on one about the frogs and stuff. Basically, I really like making games. I, and while I'm doing all this, you know, I'm making all these crochet patterns for all these little miniature crochet things. And we're kind of starting to create a little bit of a, like a rogues gallery, uh, if you will. Like, like just a bunch of these little tiny creatures. And each one, I thought what would be a fun thing to do is to kind of like what you're saying, have trading cards, but they are crocheted things. So we make a game. <laughs> this is going to be so... I've never said this out loud, okay? This has all been just in my head. The idea would be <laughs> kind of like Pokemon cards or, or Magic the Gathering, a card game, if you will, that you, you like have a certain amount of like let's say points in the game that you can use and you have like a team of of pieces that you can play and then you have like a game where like let's say when you get the crochet pattern for this for a t-rex it also comes with the stats of if you were to use it in in the game like let's say the game's called like amigurumi showdown or whatever you play your little character and it's got stats where it's like the T-Rex has eight, so much health and, and this is the special attack it has and this is how much it costs to, to include in the game. And then like your other team, your, the other person against you plays the Stegosaurus which has XYZ and then like it's your turn and you fight. So it's kind of like Pokemon in that way but you have like a little team of characters and you're consistently like, fighting each other. I don't know. I just think it'd be really cool to play a, like a card game basically, but you actually use am your amigurumi that you've crocheted as your pieces or your, as your game things. Wouldn't that be cool? It'd be really cool. And then in addition to that, we could do playing cards, actual playing cards that you can get um, with like pictures of them. So that way you can like have the stats and all the information at hand. Yeah, like Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokigurumi. Exactly. Exactly. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be so cool. That would take a lot of thinking, though, so maybe eventually. Probably. Honestly, probably eventually with how my, my noggin works. Um, okay, let's see where the end of this round is. I think we're on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9, 10. So we're at 80 stitches around already, which is pretty big. Six, seven. Okay, so we're still at ten. Nine and ten. Let's finish this round and see how it's gonna look. Eight. Nine. 10. Do I have a favorite Bonimal? Oh, I can't say that out loud. They'll, go, they'll get upset with me. Um, I actually think I do. I have a current favorite Bonimal that I've made um, that uh, I haven't had a chance to come out with like the tutorial for it yet. But I do have one that I made that I really like. It's basically like a little demon. Let's see. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, still on track. Nine and ten. Okay, so I'm consistently, by the way, Cooper, if you're following along, I'm basically doing like uh, I'm I'm doing every round where it's like single crochet six increase. Uh repeat eight times. See and like I keep doing that. I'm currently at single crochet eight and then increase, repeat eight times, eighty stitches total. So if you can keep like like you know doing the rounds to get to that point um that's what i've currently done and i think i'm gonna stop at 80 or at, at this round basically it's one two three four five six eight, 
perfect. And then I might just cut our cardboard a little bit smaller to make it work. One. Five. Eight. I think this is the end of our round. Let's see. I don't know why, but I just have a feeling. Three, four, five, six, seven. Nope, I was wrong. When did I start crocheting? Um, I started crocheting in high school, which uh, specifically I think sophomore year of high school. Um, and I graduated in 2010. So I probably started crocheting in like 2008. So that would be, or 2007. So that would be, if I started crocheting in 2007, and it's 2022. I've been crocheting for about 15 years. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Okay. So this will be the end of that, of the increasing out. I think that's pretty good. It's a little smaller than our, than our uh, piece of cardboard, but that's okay. I'll probably just cut the cardboard a little bit smaller. Um, as we go and what we're gonna do is basically I mean this is gonna be the bottom of it but we're basically gonna build it up like that just doesn't seem big enough though because we want it to be about that big and close into about there you know what I'm gonna do one more round of increasing because you know what we're party people and that's just how it's gonna be Two, four, eight, nine, and then ten, eleven. Okay. Uh, fifteen years. Yeah. So fifteen years. Yeah, John. Yeah, I. Um, you know, if if it doesn't say it in the paperwork, you're probably fine. Um, what was the first thing I crocheted? I think the first thing I crocheted was an octopus. Um, uh, I mean, the very first thing I crocheted was probably just like a little square. Uh, but I think the first pattern that I made was a little octopus. And then the first pattern that I personally designed was the next thing that I crocheted, which was a, um, it was a uh, hot air balloon. It was actually a cute little hot air balloon that I made. Ooh, how to add elastic to crochet. That's an interesting question. I think the best way you could probably do it is make sure that you have yarn that is pretty um, elastic itself. Uh, and then maybe crocheting around an elastic band might help. I don't know. That's an interesting concept though. This, I think this is Breath of the Wild music, by the way. Yeah, after this round, I will be doing, uh, oh, by the way, okay, so Cooper, I'm increasing up to 88 stitches now. So I'm doing one more round of increasing to get to the size that I want. And you know what? I'm actually going to try something at the base of this to make it really, a really um, sturdy, like, kind of base. And I'll show you that in a sec. Yeah, a lot of people do that. Crochet only in the front loops only. Um, I actually end up seeing a lot of pat or people's, like, or they'll post crochet, and they'll do that, and I'll be like, ooh, you shouldn't do that. But, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. Well, you were in the tub? You take baths? Man, that's awesome. <laughs> I haven't taken a bath in a long time, but that sounds very relaxing. Uh, but Vife, bit late, uh, is this going to be a dice bag? It totally could be a dice bag. We're actually making, though, a bag for dinosaurs, to put dinosaurs into, because I just have so many of these dinosaurs, and I need somewhere to put them. So we're doing a, um, plus it'll be good for a lava run, my new game. Um, so I'm building a volcano right now. It, but it's going to be a bag, like a volcano bag. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, we're still good. Nine, and then 10, 11. Yeah, you can use micro shape patterns for a game, but like reach out to me about it. Uh, and yeah, let me know if you want any help with it too. I think I'm getting pretty good at the whole designing game thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight, 10, 11, yeah. One more. Yeah, one more. Here. Two. Four. There we go. Ten and eleven. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, I think this is gonna be as big as we want it. Don't, I don't think I want to increase it any more than this. Yeah, you know what? This is gonna be big enough because it is gonna stretch over it too. All right, that's pretty good. You know what? I'm gonna also measure. Let's measure how big this cardboard is to like get an idea for the pattern. Like how big of a cardboard piece do you want to make it? Um, I'll be right back. I just need to grab a, um, a ruler, which is actually right behind the camera. Right over here. Hi, sleepy boy. Jimbo is asleep, which is great. Okay, so specifically, this is about six and a half-ish in diameter. So in the pattern, I'll write that. Cut a six and a half inch diameter piece of cardboard or however big your base is, should be good. Okay, so we've increased it up all the way. Um, in this next round, let's see, how many rounds have I done? Let's see. Um, I will explain why you don't wanna only crochet in the front loops uh, in just a second, Tessalarian. But let's see, we've got, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so we've done 11 rounds so far. Um, in this next round, we're gonna only crochet in the front loops, actually, uh, because I wanna try to make a, like, a sharp base. So if you've seen my pattern for the, um, for Frankenstein, which I have somewhere, but I don't know where. Ooh. Um, but I do have a pattern for Frankenstein somewhere, but basically the top of Frankenstein's head is kind of like, you know, a square. So basically what we're gonna try to do with this base of this lava is try to kind of mimic that a little bit so that the edge of the of where the base of this volcano is, is a very sharp angle up. So how we're gonna do that is we're going to, oh, see you later, Autumn, thanks for joining. Um, is we're going to do a round where we're just crocheting in the front loops only. So we're on round 12 here and round 12, we're going to single crochet one into all the front loops all the way around. And there should be 88 stitches for each round or for the round. So we're only crocheting in the front loops. Okay. So just this fr first loop right here, not into both loops. Now to answer Tassilarian's question of why you wouldn't normally want to crochet all in the front loops is because see how open that hole is right here? That is gonna happen throughout your entire pattern if you only crochet in the front loops. And Amigurumi already has a tendency to have your um, hole, like your pattern be a little holy. Um, so yeah, it's best to just not just crochet in the front loops because or else your pattern is going to be a little bit stretched out further than it was going to be. Um, it's just a little bit more secure if you crochet into both loops uh, for the majority of your pattern rather than just the front loops. Uh, and then simultaneously, if you were to crochet only in the back loops, you'll have a similar issue where it's very open and holy, but you would also have like a long, like a stripe 
going through each round, and it'll end up... It just will... It'll look a little weird, basically. Uh, Sajito, good question. Sajito asked, uh, how do I organize my yarn stash? Because uh, Sajito's yarn stash looks like a tumbleweed. Um, so the way I organize my yarn stash is by color. Uh, I, I like to organize it all by color. I don't do it by weight or, um, or the type of yarn. I just do fully by color. And I just try not to get too many different kinds of yarns. Uh, so it's like mostly cottons and wool yarn in there uh, some acrylic but not that much um and i have this like basically a uh i have a glass armoire that i got from ikea i think it was like maybe a hundred dollars maybe um and it's pretty useful for for just like seeing all my yarn but then not like falling out and then whenever i need a ball of yarn i just go in there i pull out a ball and then uh yeah crochet with it uh, and then I have like a bunch of extra yarn in a uh, in a basically a chest where it's just extra, like uh, just a bunch of other kinds of yarn, but they're all full balls of yarn. So what I have in my uh, glass armoire is it's all like like yarn that I've already used. It doesn't have the wrapper on it anymore. But if it still has a wrapper on it, I keep it in a different place. What kind of yarn did I use for the monomal? Okay, so the monomal, if you don't know, is this fuzzy bag that we're kind of like making another bag for right now, kind of using a similar design. Um, the yarn that I used is actually called, um, I think it's called Angel Hair uh, Buttercream, I think. It, I got it from Joanne Fabrics. Uh, there are a few different kinds like this. It's basically... Um, a blend of uh, alpaca wool and something else, but the alpaca is really what makes it really fuzzy. So that's the yarn that I used. Um, I can grab you a ball of it in a, in a little bit. Um, actually, I think I talked about it in the beginning of the video where I crocheted the monomal. So if you want to check that out, uh, I'd probably explain it there. Do I have a favorite brand, yarn brand? Um, my favorite yarn brand, uh, I don't really, I mean, I have like favorites. Um, I really like to use, for example, I like to use Lily Sugar and Cream cotton yarn uh, for my cottons usually. Um, but my favorite kind of yarn is actually, I think more important, which is I really like to use, as you probably already know, is 100% cotton worsted weight yarn. That's my favorite kind of yarn to use. And the reason is because um, I think it makes my stitches look really good. Uh, it's easy to work with. You can pull out the stitches and it doesn't stretch the yarn out too much. There's a lot of different colors. It's affordable yarn uh, and it is a natural yarn. So it can actually like compost or recycle. Whereas if you're using something like a polyester or an acrylic yarn, uh, it can be kind of hard to, I mean, you might be able to recycle it, but it definitely won't compost and it's basically like plastic. You're crocheting with plastic. Uh, it also doesn't, doesn't feel as good as if you were not to use that yarn. So that is my favorite kind of yarn to use. Uh, and good brands are Lily Sugar and Cream. They have great cotton yarns uh, in a lot of different colors. Um, Lion brand cotton yarn, uh, Bernat cotton. Bernat has a good cotton yarns that are pretty affordable uh, and pretty good. Uh, but yeah, I think those are my favorites right now, but it does kind of sw uh, sway and shift um, based on the project. What is my most genius pattern that I've ever made? Um, oh, that's an interesting question. Hmm. I think as far, like what I immediately think when you say the, the most genius pattern is the most like well-designed pattern where it's just like very succinct and like put together and it, basically anything that is a no sew pattern for me is very succinct. I really like those patterns a lot because it's just like, boom, you make it once, you don't have to cut, you don't have to sew, it's very easy. Um, so because of that, I really like my uh 
I really like the uh, the T-Rex pattern I really like. Um, I also really like the, um, this is the T-Rex pattern. Because it's almost all made without sewing. You do have to sew the tail on, but it's really easy. Um, but I really like how the feet work. And I really like the new Raptor pattern a lot. Like a lot, lot. It is this one. It's this pattern. And this pattern actually has no sewing. I mean, you do have to attach the teeth, but they're not really sewn on. They're just basically attached. This one's pretty cleverly put together so that you don't actually have to sew anything together. Like the lip is just made in a different way. It's all just made in one piece without sewing anything on. I'll be coming out with this pretty soon, um, but it's a really good, uh, I think it's a really good pattern. I'm really excited about it. I do have a little bit of work to do on it before I release it. I wanna test it out a little bit more, um, but I always basically wanna test out my patterns a little bit more. Oopsies, I did a few extra stitches than I needed to. Okay, so we finished that round where we all where we crocheted all in the front loops and see how it's like kind of going straight up like that That's kind of what we wanted to do except we wanted to go the other way We wanted to go straight the other way and so what we're gonna do now is We are going to do we're gonna work into both loops for this next round. We're gonna do single crochets in uh, every stitch um, but we're going to work into both loops of the next stitch. Let me actually zoom in and show this in case you don't, just to help, help explain things. Okay, so we're going to work into both loops of the next stitch. So that's going to be under both of these instead of just the front loop. And we're going to work into the back unused loop that we didn't use in the last round. And this is going to really bend it straight up. So it's going to turn it completely in a different direction. Um, the hard thing is finding where the first front loop is but it's gonna be right following that one, right there. But once you find the first one, so now you can see I'm into both loops and the back loop that I didn't use. Here's all those unused back loops simultaneously. We're just gonna do single crochets all the way around and that should bend it straight up, which will create a nice little border for us. And that's pretty good. Yes, you absolutely can do testing um, of which pattern? The Raptor? You totally can if you would like to. Um, I just put the test uh, for the Raptor pattern at clubcrochet.com slash Raptor. Um, I think, Naughty Flowers, I'm pretty sure you have a membership because you've been helping with the, um, the stuff. If you don't have a Club Crochet membership, like I didn't give you a Club Crochet membership, uh, reach out to me. I would absolutely love to give you a Club Crochet membership for your help with translating patterns. Um, uh, just to like basically say thank you. So if, if I haven't already done that, please let me know and I would like to. Okay, next stitch. Just gonna take it one stitch at a time here. But see how it's like, you can kind of see how this bump is being formed. It'll really show when we finish it, finish this round, you'll see how it like really just edged it straight in. So it'll be cool. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome. Oh, Cooper is on it. Yeah, Cooper just posted it in the, um, in the chat. So that's where you can go to find this Raptor pattern uh, and provide feedback. Um, to, ver to provide feedback, just comment on the Raptor pattern itself. Uh, there's a little comment thing on the bottom of it and give me any kind of feedback that you have for it uh, And because I'm definitely looking for feedback before I release this pattern publicly Eventually the Raptor pattern I think is gonna be free maybe But uh, not for a while. I really need to make sure that I have everything all my ducks in a row before I act actively like release it So we're gonna kind of try to make it go up like that and this next round we're gonna decrease it down start start the process of decreasing it down a little bit We're gonna get really fun when we get to the lava around the edge. I've got a really cool idea for how to do that. I don't know if it's gonna work the way I want it to, but I think it might. We'll see.
Koopa is on fire. Hey, here's another plea. If you haven't yet, please like this video. Like the video down below. If this video gets another, if this video gets, what did I say? 350. Yeah, that's it. If this video gets 350 likes, we'll do another giveaway next live stream. Um, because we are doing a giveaway this live stream. If you didn't know already, it's in the it's in the description. We've been talking about it a bunch, so I hope you hope you know what I mean. Ooh, you gotta love, you gotta love. Lawn Lawn Ranch song. The song makes me a little sleepy though. Not gonna lie. Once I finish this round, I'm gonna. I need some tea, or else I will die. Not really. I'll just shrivel into a very tiny um, creature, my my natural form. You guys do not want to see that. Trust me. Will I fall asleep on sh Will I fall? What? Hmm? No, I won't. All right, about halfway done with this round. So tomorrow, I am flying to Texas, to Austin for a bachelor party that I am like, ah! It's going to be a lot, for sure. So a lot of friends are going. It's going to be a lot of energy. And I am not mentally prepared. I'll tell you right now, I'm not mentally prepared. I haven't even packed yet. I need to pack. I, If you can't tell, I'm not the most bachelor party kind of dude out there. Don't really drink. I don't really party. I don't go to like sports games. We're going to a sports game, football game. And I'm just like, so like, oh my gosh. But you know what? He's one of my best buds and it's a pleasure to be invited and I'm just gonna go with the flow. So I'm excited in that regard. Kelly! How are you? What is Wombo about? I don't know. What is Wombo about? I don't know what that means. So I'm, I'm basically, I'm bending this round in a little bit to really accentuate the, the bend of it. So you guys can kind of see it and also so I can get an idea of what it's going to look like. See how it's like, it's, it's making a flat little, so you can kind of see it more on the outside than on the inside. Boom, 
Oh my god, you guys, you need to see a, a sleepy Jimbo. He's so cute and asleep. It's asleep under a box right now. It's very cute. We are good! Jules and I are great. We're very happy. We like our new spot a lot. How are you? Oh, you said you're good. All right, good. <laughs> All right, nearly done with this round. But yeah, we're good. We've, um... Yeah, we've just been getting settled in with our new place because we moved in the beginning of August. It's we just finished our first month. Which has been pretty cool. We actually got our security deposit back for our last place and they gave us the full security deposit back plus interest how cool is that i was not expecting it honestly i've been living in that place for i was living in my last place for like 10 years so i was just not expecting a my full security deposit back because i figured you know we got holes and we made holes and whatever but they gave it all back to us and i was like yes Okay, there's that round. It is kind of being weird a little bit, but it's not that bad. Okay. Eventually, I think I'm gonna just like poke a hole in it and like pull that middle string through it. But you see how it's like kind of, it fits the, around that. And then we're gonna do decreasing in this next round, which will pull it up a little bit. Bop, bop. Uh, we'll stretch it a little bit out. Okay. So the next round we're going to do is we want to decrease it four times. So I believe it's going to be... If we want to decrease it four times in 88 stitches, we want to do 21 or 20 and then decrease it once and then do that four times i think that's right so 20 stitches and then decreasing it once i'm pretty sure that's what we want to do let's try it so we're gonna we're just work into both stitches again we're gonna do 20 one two three four six Eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Twelve, fourteen, fifteen, nineteen, and 20 and then we'll do an invisible decrease specifically an invisible decrease so you don't have to see the decreases too much there we go all right and that's just going to slowly decrease us down just a little bit and we'll repeat that uh four times total one two four Right? So it's gonna go like that and then pull it in a little bit. Am 
One second, I need to fix the air conditioning. Oh, see you later, Tessalarian. Thanks for joining. Oops, I stopped counting. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, we're on it. Ten, eleven. This is gonna be my third one, I think, so. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Aha! Uh -huh. Twenty. There we go. And then our invisible decrease. One more. Two. Four. Fifteen. Twenty, and this should be the last one. All right. Yeah, that should be good. See, so we'll do that. It's supposed to go up and around it like this. I probably should have decreased more than that, but that's okay. Just like that, though. How stretched out does that keep the stitches in the bottom? Oh, not bad, actually. That's pretty good. Oh, we got a Jules. We got a Jules and a Jimbo. You want to say hi? Yes. Hello. Hello. Am I on? Is yes. this thing on? Hello. Hello. Have you seen Jimbo yet today? Have I have. Jimbo? Yes, they have seen Jimbo yeah. at least once. And they saw him on this, and they saw him there. Oh, my gosh, yeah. I have my own t-shirt too, a gray one, with a little green ball mm -hmm. of Jimbo. How's everybody's day going? Going good? Yeah, it's going pretty well. What you See? making? We got a volcano going. Oh yeah, volcano. And then this is the base of it. And I'm gonna try to keep this, I might end up sewing this on. Sewing it on through the cardboard? Yeah. Yeah, good call. Just like a few stitches, mm -hmm. just to keep it in place, but I mean, that's holding this place pretty well, actually. Hi, everybody. Aw, I miss you guys, too. We really got to get back on our I know, show. I know. I, I was thinking about that, about how we need to set it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. And like, oh, we should record it before we go. But we can't record it before we go. No. Because I'm going away this weekend, and then she's going away... To San Francisco. To San Francisco the weekend after. Yep. Or the whole week after. Yep. And then we have three working days, and then we're going to a wedding. Yeah. Out of town. So it's just been a lot. A lot of stuff. A lot Hi, of stuff. buddy. 
Yeah, Jimbo's awake, but barely. Barely awake. He's so sweet. Ooh, a tank top option. Johnny mm -hmm. wants a tank top option. Okay. okay. See, I th I thought there might be people. We'll out find there that a want good tank top. tank top option. There was some not good tank top options on yeah. that site. We'll find a good one. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. wanted to pop in and say hi. Sorry for interrupting. No, you're all I good. It's a nice. Look, it's a nice break. I like it. He looks so cute. And I'm done with meetings. Don't bite me. Thank you. <laughs> I, okay. like how he, I like how he apologizes right he away. He does. Oh, he's biting me again. Yeah. Bye, goes, everybody. Sorry, I can't get him to wave because he's too busy eating me. I'll see you later. Bye. Okay. Back to whip. All right. Um, so we just have a little bit more of the stream today. I think we'll do... I mean, it's holding, it's like, it's staying in there, which is pretty good. But I do think we need to decrease it one more time. So this time, we're gonna do, let's see, we're at 80, we should be at 84 stitches around now because we only decreased four times. Is 84 a division of six? I think it is, right? So 84 divided by six, let's get a calculator. 84 divided by 6. Yeah, it is. Okay. So this time we're going to do, I think we'll do, because I think I want to decrease it down 6 times this next round instead of 4. So that would be 13. 13 times. Yeah, okay. So I think we're going to do 12 single crochets and then an invisible decrease six times, which should be, I think that should be right. Let's just, let's just see if it'll work really quick. Let's just do like the, kind of like the math here. So if we did 12 and then a decrease, would it make it all the way to the end and would there be six decreases total? So there's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then twelve, and then a decrease. So boom, boom. There's our first decrease. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Second decrease. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Third decrease. Two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fourth decrease. I think we're gonna make it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Fifth decrease, and the last one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Sixth decrease. Math, math, math. All right, let's math this. We mathed it. Okay, so again, that's 12 single crochets and then one invisible decrease six times. One, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, ten, eleven. 12 and then our invisible decrease front loop and a front loop and then a single crochet all right let's do this again one two see you later see leaf sauce thanks for joining you may be back great <laughs> three four six seven 9, 10, 11, and 12, and then decrease. Hopefully this just doesn't decrease it too much, but I really wanted to get on back onto the six count after doing eights. Does that make sense? So I really wanted to get it back to um, like a, divis uh, a stitch count divisible by six was the goal. One, two. 
four. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. And then where did I go to college? I went to college in, at San Francisco State University. That's what brought me to San Francisco originally. And, and that's where I met Jules. I didn't meet her at San Francisco State, but we did both go to the same school, actually. Um, all right. One, two, I think this is my fourth. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, and then our decrease. All right, this should be the fifth one. Two, three, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I think we got one more round then, or one more. Let me count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then our decrease. Yep, perfect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me finish this round, Anna. Five, six. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and then our last decrease. And let's take a look at what we got. All right. Grab our little circle, toss the circle in there. out a little bit like that. It's pretty good though. Right? That's not bad. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna need to sew on just a, like a few stitches around it. And we're gonna need to pull this through the center of it. But I think I wanna get a few more rounds before I start doing that just because kind of going to be hard to crochet with this cardboard in it uh so i want to be like a little bit out like just a few more stitches before i do that but it's a nice sturdy bottom i think it looks pretty good and then we'll just go I mean, that decreased us down pretty pretty tight, I think. I might even decrease a little bit more. Well, maybe I'll do a round of single crochets and then decrease this more so that it's like up to like here. Because we're going to like there, I think. It's not gonna be that big of a bag. Let's see, how many dinosaurs could we feasibly fit in there? Oh, you know what? We'll be able to fit a pretty decent amount. Yeah, especially when it's all like this big and we can like stuff it full. Like this much. Yeah, we'll be able to fit like 10 or 12 of these in there. That's pretty good. Okay. And we're not even halfway done with the ball, so that's good. Um, okay. Okay, Johnny, have a nice nap. Um, I have a chance, check it out, Johnny. I'm working on the skull. I'm currently working on the skull. I do have some feedback already um, with how the pattern's written, and uh, and I think 
I want to finish the skull before I fully give feedback, but um, I'm thinking that we want to make these holes a little bit bigger. You know, so it's like more like that big, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep you updated about it. I am working on it though. Hello Lillian, how are you? I hope you're having a great day. I hope you're having a great day, Lillian. They are so cute. I totally agree. All right, let's see how difficult it is to crochet this with this in there right now. No, that's too tough. I don't want to deal with it. Pop. Uh, okay. Oh, it's already almost five? Jeez, time flies. Okay, well, maybe we'll go to 530. Because I'm not done yet. You know what? Hold on. Let's go back here. I think it's, I think it's high time we start using a little bit of a stitch marker. Just a little one. Yeah, I think that the holes are gonna be different when um, we finish up, when I finish up that uh, crocheting it, Johnny. But I will keep you in the loop. Haha. <laughs> Um, Lillian, what are we making? Today we are making a volcano bag to hold a bunch of dinosaurs that I crocheted. Um, it's for a little, I've been making a board game that you can play using your little amigurumi crocheted things. Oh, someone asked, uh, is, is, do I only crochet amigurumi? No, I don't only crochet amigurumi. I do crochet other things every now and then, um, but amigurumi is my favorite thing to crochet for really a variety of reasons. First one being that being a uh, being a man, uh, there's not that many things that I can crochet that are wearable. There's not that many designs that are crocheted that are wearable um, that are you know designed for men. Uh, there's some, but there's not that many. So there's not a lot of things that I wanna crochet. Also, it's hot here, so I don't really wanna make any sweaters or anything like that. Um, maybe a beanie. I used to make a lot of beanies. Um, uh, other thing I don't like to uh, take a long time on a specific project. So really this project is pretty big for me. Uh, the one that we're working on right now. So like, I just usually don't like to work on a project for, for, you know, longer than a couple hours. And usually I like to get that project finished in that time period. So that's why I really like making amigurumi, specifically tiny amigurumi, because I can make it really quick. Um, I just have like a lower attention span. Um, but sometimes it is nice to work on projects that span like a longer period of time. Um, I have made one blanket uh, and that was, I did actually never even finished it full size. It's like half the size of a blanket um, because it's just so, it takes so long and so much yarn. <laughs> But I've made like bow ties and ties, um, a, a decent amount of beanies and hats. And um, I used to make a lot of children's hats uh, because it allowed me to be more like clever with my design. But yeah. What are your, mo are your most triggering things when you crochet for me it's uneven tension at random places oh interesting okay i would say my most triggering things when i crochet is someone trying to uh well is it uh, let's see one of the most triggering things that i crochet probably probably my cat uh like trying to steal the ball of yarn that i'm using while i crochet or um me forgetting scissors or forgetting like a specific thing and then like getting all cozy and perfectly ready to crochet and then realizing oh i forgot my crochet hook or oh i forgot my scissors that is so annoying or when you drop a needle into the couch and you're like damn it 
that needle is going to be in this couch forever. I hate when that happens. But those aren't really that triggering, I guess. I don't know. I feel like that's a fair... I think I, like, I feel like it's fair. Okay. That is our round of all just single crochets. After doing our round of decreasing, we did one round of all single crochets. I think there were 78 stitches, but I didn't count because I'm a dingus. Now I'm going to decrease it down again, maybe? Let's see. So if we want the general shape to be like, you know, like if we want it to go in about like that, we definitely want to decrease here. But the question is, do, how sharply do we want to decrease? Do we want to decrease it by six? Or do we want to decrease it by three? And then another round of three after that. I think we're going to do six. So it's going to get pulled in a little bit tighter. Or, hmm. I think this is from Banjo Kazooie. I think, because we can go like, no, but that might, that might be, hmm. Hold on, I gotta get a, a look at this angle. Yeah, okay. I think we'll do a round of just all decreasing. Um, we'll do uh, Cooper. For this next round, we're going to do 11 single crochets and then an invisible decrease six times around. Um, uh, am I going to make more patterns of burbs? Yes. November will be the month of burbs. Uh, we're gonna do a few new verb patterns. Uh, I think we're gonna try to do the cockatoo, the toucan, the hummingbird, and the um, macaw. I'm gonna try to do four of them in that same month. So, but yes, there's there are gonna be more verb patterns in uh, November, and for membership, uh, it's gonna be a little earlier than that. So it'll probably be in. Um, uh, probably in like late September, early October, I'll have the rough drafts done for them. But they're already almost, like most of them are already almost done. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then our decrease. Yes. Uh, but I do want to work more on tutorials too, so. You know, because I don't really have as many tutorials on the website anymore. Like, I've been doing so many patterns. Uh, so next year, I really want to put more effort into just, like, more stitch tutorials. Here's how to do this stitch or that stitch. Or here's how to, like, you know, things like that. Um, and then I also want to put more effort into uh, collaborations. I want to do a lot more collaborations next year. Echo Cat. Great question. Uh, Echo Cat asks... Um, are you enjoying running your own business? What's the best thing about it? Uh, I do, I very much enjoy running my own business. The best thing about running my own business, I think there's two things that I would say are the best things. The first is that, um, sorry, wait one second. I think this is the stitch I need to decrease on. Yeah, it is. Um, the first is that I get to make my own hours, you know, like I get to work when I wanna work, which is usually at like midnight to 4 a.m. <laughs> That's, I, I, I work, I usually work like uh, about maybe like 10 hours a day, nine, eh, maybe not that much. I don't know, but I get to do it when I want to, which is nice. Um, I also really enjoy uh, just the freedom, like the creative freedom of being able to design whatever I want to design. Um, 
there have been a lot of challenges to running my own business, things that I didn't expect at all, like just like uh, a lot of like um, logistic things like taxes and, and like um, inventory and keeping track of stuff and making sure I have always have the product ready and trying to sell it to different yarn stores and stuff like that. Like there's just so much that you don't think about when you start a business. Um, but another great thing about starting my own business has been um, being able to hire my friends. So I, we have, uh, we're about to have our second full-time employee um, and both of our, so it's been me, my friend, Nicole, she's basically like my business partner. Um, she helps us with all, any kind of crochet kits. If you email the website, she usually gets it before I get it. Um, so we both kind of respond to those together. Basically, just like I needed help and she was the help. And then um, uh, my other friend, Jimmy, who is the website designer, um, he is finally going to go on full time very soon. So that's going to be pretty freaking exciting. Um, he was my college roommate, actually, my first college roommate and uh, really my only college roommate from uh, that I like am actual friends with <laughs> the rest of them were not that way but um yeah and yes we are working we're actually working on a club crochet branded yarn uh that is that is in the works uh it's just really really hard to get companies to um to work with us uh because we're not as big as other companies you know so that has been a very difficult process but we're working on it <laughs> yeah, Naughty Flowers. I th we were. We were separated at birth. Lachlan! Hello! Welcome! Sending love from Australia. From Australia? Good day, mate. How you been? Hope you're having a great day. One, two, three, four. Thanks for joining the live stream. Nine, 10, 11, and then our decrease. Boom. Okay, let's see how that worked. Uh, this live started about three hours, or two hours ago. It started at 3 p.m. my time, and we are in California. Okay, so here's what we got. Okay, so that goes in like that. We've got a nice flat bottom, so it'll sit up right. We've decreased it down a few rounds. Now we're gonna do, now we just need to like go up and slowly start decreasing it now. We need to slow it down a little bit. So I think we'll do two rounds of single crochets after this, but can I start crocheting it with the... No, not yet. I think we need one more round of crochet before we start. Yeah. I think it looks pretty good though. You know, it's, it's starting to come together for sure. And especially like... Once we have it like, once we get it like that tall about, maybe like that tall, and we add on the, it's real, I think we're gonna get something really, really cute out of this in the long run. Oh, great, Sajito. Thank you so much for that feedback. Yeah, I, I will start uh, doing the live streams a little later. I think we're gonna keep doing these Thursdays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I think is a really good time for a lot of people. So, um, it, and it works really well for me because yeah, it just works really well. So I think we'll continue doing this around this time. I know my Aussie accent needs some improvement. I can do a pretty okay New Zealand accent, I think. But uh, I can't do an Australian. I can do pretty good New Zealand though, I think. Let's, I usually get into the accent by counting to 10. Um, hold on, let me, uh, so Cooper, I'm doing, I'm definitely doing one round of single crochets. I might do two. Okay, after that round of decreasing. 
Um, but usually I count to ten, so let's see how I count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then ten. And this right here is going to be ten stitches. And I could just keep going around and just keep doing single crochets into each stitch all the way until I get to the end of the round. How's that? Was that a good was that a good Kiwi accent? Feels it feels a little off, but you know what? I don't think it's that bad. Yeah, the face for the volcano is gonna be really derpy. Super derpy. Oh boy, 2 a.m. in France. Wow, wow, we wow. Hey, that is so cool though. Bonjour, Linari. Merci beaucoup. Pour... I don't know how to say to, for coming to the live stream. Or. Mm, I don't know how to say. I don't know how to say that. Je ne sais pas. <laughs> hey, Echo Cat gives me a passing grade from someone that's in New Zealand. I'll take that. Texas. Hello from Texas, Zilla. I'm going to be in your state next or tomorrow. Tomorrow. I'm going to Austin. So I'll see you there. Let's do more shots. Where else is everybody from? We got we got someone from France. We got someone from Australia. Someone from New Zealand. Someone from Texas. I knew Cooper's in Canada. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, heck yeah, man. I'll talk to you soon. Oh, please do. Thank you so much for following. I really appreciate it, Lachlan. I'll see you soon. Anna is from Iowa. We got Sajito is from the Philippines. Oh, we got two Philippines. We got Ohio, New York. Another Texas. Wow, a lot of Texas. Colorado. See you later, Carla. Carly. Thanks for joining. Toronto. That is awesome. Sanka Nakatira Weirdo. Yep. I wonder what that means. I'm guessing it is whatever native language they speak in the Philippines. Philip, Phil, Phil, Phil. I don't know. I don't know what the language is called. Yeah. Well, I know a little bit of French. No, I mean, most of the languages of the 15,000 languages that I know, uh, Abby, are from planets that you've never seen before, like and uh, I know some uh, and I I'm pretty fluent in you know, so like those languages I don't think you probably know, but I know like, and I know a lot of dialects from so yeah, those are some languages that I know, but they're just, they're just from planets that you've probably never heard of um, I'm very uh I'm very much of a hipster of an alien, if you can't tell by the glasses. <laughs> D'être ce stream. Ah, merci beaucoup, Lionel. Why are we in Christmas music right now? Let's change it. 
Oh, let's go to outer space, baby. So now I'm doing another round of single crochets. Well, maybe we should check this before I... Yeah, I'm fine with that. Two rounds of single crochets, and then I'll decrease it down again. And then we'll do two rounds, we'll decrease it. We'll get down to about maybe like 24 stitches around. Tag long. Oh, that's what it's called? Tag along? Wow. I've never heard, I've never known that was the name of the language they speak in the Philippines. That's very interesting. Did I get a haircut? I did get a haircut. Thanks for checking, sunshine. Still no word from the ER, huh? Well, I hope I hope we hear something soon. Keep us updated. Um, but yes, I did get a haircut. I went to a wedding a couple weeks ago, and so I got, I got a nice haircut. Plus it's hot. It's so hot here. Yeah, I heard Texas has got some weird weather right now. Um, I guess it's going to be raining when we get there, which is kind of crazy. Because here it's like super hot. It's like a hundred and something degrees outside, which is crazy. How long till this live stream ends? We are going to be finishing up our live stream in about... At 5.30, so... Um, 30 more minutes, a little less than 30 minutes. And then we'll also be announcing the winner of the giveaway. If you didn't know, we're doing a giveaway. Uh, if you want to sign up for the giveaway, there's a link in the form, or there's a form in the description of this video that you can use uh, to sign up for the giveaway. And we'll choose someone at random to win $20 to the Club Crochet Store. So it's kind of a nice little, you know, just a nice little giveaway. Tag along, tag along, tag along. Like that? I think I said that right, Hannah. I think so, so therefore I am. Yeah, someone said to bring an umbrella. I was like, an umbrella? Okay. <laughs> I'll bring an umbrella. Uh, Anna, do I crochet much for myself or is it mostly most of it for the channel? I crochet a lot for myself. I crochet at least every single day. Um, I'll show you the thing that I've been working on this week, actually, for crocheting for myself. Um, I think you'll like it. One sec. Let me finish up this round, and then I'll show you. It's almost done. Uh, there's a few more. I want to, like, make a little book and stuff for them, but you'll see in a sec what I'm talking about. But the good thing about this being my business is that I get to, you know, like even when I do crochet for myself, it is also still kind of crocheting it for the business. Um, okay, so this is what I'm currently working on for myself. Uh, I have this little driftwood that I found in San Francisco. And so I made this little uh, mushroom man for it and I gave him little glasses and he's gonna have a little book. And you can see how I have these little notches that I've carved in this. So what I'm gonna do, he's got these strings that go on it, so he's on a swing. He's gonna be on a swing with a little book. I'm gonna hide it outside my house. So yeah, that's the most recent thing I've made um, for myself. Uh, I mean, I have a few things that I have made uh, in the meantime, but you've seen some of them. Like last week I showed you Nurgle, it's this like little demon that I made. Yeah, he's a little mushroom librarian, exactly. All right, let's see. Can I start crocheting with this in it now? What do we say? What do we think? I 
think I'm decreasing a little too quickly. Because we want to get at least this big, right? Well, maybe I'm actually just perfectly. So it'll go, it'll keep going at this direction, right? So it'll be like. Yeah, we'll keep this route going. I think we are currently. Oh, we did two rounds of single crochets, Cooper. Just two. Um, we'll probably decrease again and then do. Maybe we should do three rounds, though. So it'll be. Because, like, our options are we can either make it go, like, sharp in and then up a little bit so it's more like a kind of like a you know it's like a here I'll tell you what okay so our options are we can crochet it so like this is the bottom of it and we've gone out like this far right so our options are we can either come in fast like quicker and then go slower so that it's more like this or we can go the other way so like like that so it's more like a um kind of like a uh what's it called like a like a beaker for a science experiment or we can go out a little bit more like this and make it decrease and slower so it's got more rounded outside i think this way is going to be more what we're looking for which means that I want to do another round of single crochets and start decreasing it slower rather than decreasing it quicker. You know? So let's do, um, we're going to do another round of single crochets with that in mind. So I'm going to do three rounds of single crochets instead of two. Volcan, Volcan, that's how you say volcano. Volcan. Oh. oh, I'm a whole new man. Wow, that was crazy. Let's see if I can get another one. Ready? Show you Nurgle? Okay, one sec. This is Nurgle. Um, I think Johnny named it last week. I've been, I'm testing out like just some fun other patterns basically. He's just a little demon. I have him under my fireplace because it's under hell. But yeah, that is Nurgle. I really like the horns. That's my favorite part of Nurgle. Here you go, Nurgle. You can sit right there while we make our, while we make your little home. I feel like Nurgle would live in this volcano. You know. Okay, they're sending her home. That's great. That's good news, it sounds like, Sunshine. has an idea for Halloween. They say, you see those pumpkin patterns that involve lots of sewing to get in shape? So why don't you take that risk of failing and make a pumpkin without any sewing? Ooh, I'm actually, ah, that. I'm working on something that. I'm working on something. Basically, what I'm working on for the Club Crochet Pro Kit uh, for October, uh, I'm gonna make a pumpkin, but it's gonna be a reversible pumpkin that uh, is a, on the other side is a ghost. So you can turn it from a ghost to a pumpkin. I think that's gonna be pretty cool. But yes, I, I agree. I think a no sew pumpkin pattern would also be pretty cool. I wonder how I'd do that. I mean, I don't think that'd be that tough. 
That seems pretty not too crazy. I'll keep it in mind. I'll keep it in mind. I think I've got a few ideas for how to make it work. Whoa, very ethereal. We're getting real ethereal up in here. Oh, we'll definitely come up with a name for this volcano eventually. I think we got time for maybe like two or three more rounds of crochet and then uh, we'll pick it back up uh, next live stream, which will be next Thursday at 3 p.m. So let you know. I'll probably get a picture of this after it to show our progress. Yeah, um, had a question about crochet etiquette. What are your thoughts on selling final products from other people's patterns? So it depends on the person. Uh, everybody has different rules for their patterns. Um, uh, and so you should always ask the designer if it's okay for you to sell things based on their patterns. That being said, for club crochet patterns, you are allowed to. So if you, any of the patterns on our website, you can crochet and sell. Um, and uh, yeah, it's fine, you totally can. So if you want to use any clip crochet patterns to sell final products, you totally can, and I highly encourage it. That's how I started my business. So um, I really think it's pretty cool to do, and you totally should do that. I really want to create a place on the website for you to actually sell crocheted things, or at least like advertise it. Not like pay to advertise it, but like post things for sale that you made using a clip crochet pattern. Um, but I haven't figured it out just yet. Okay, so uh, by the way, Cooper, um, so we did three rounds of just single crochets um, after our last round of decreasing. Now we're going to do another round of decreasing. We're doing one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten single crochets, and then an invisible decrease is what we're going for. Ten single crochets, then an invisible decrease. One, two, three, four, six, eight, nine, 10, and then our invisible decrease right here. And that's gonna, should bring us down to, um, and then, oh, and then repeat that six times total. And that should bring us down to uh, 66 stitches, I think. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and then invisible degrees. Yep, we're good. <laughs> okay, Lachlan, I'll wait for you. We're only gonna be on for another 15 minutes though, just heads up. How did I start making my own patterns and what was your first pattern? Um, the I started making my own patterns pretty much like after my first project, um, once I figured out how single crochets worked, uh, I just started to test it out um, and I didn't learn much crocheting after that, uh, like from tutorials. I just kind of like made it up. I was like, okay, well, what happens if I pull two loops through one and then do a single crochet? Or what happens if I do like uh, work only in this loop or if I work into that loop down there? So I just kept experimenting. Um, my first pattern that I created was for a, um, uh, what's it called? A, uh, a hot air balloon, but I never wrote it down. Like it was, it was just like my custom made thing. And then I made like a lot of owls and stuff. I didn't really write down my patterns to sell them for like a few years until I was done, uh, like ready to go. Um, and I think my first pattern was for um, a, my beanie. Uh, which I actually have on the on our website right now. It's from my classic beanie. Um, that was 
That was one of the first things I designed that was fully my design. I didn't use it from anything else. I learned how to do that ribbing and stuff, and I thought it was so cool. And then um, there was a little bat logo, and I think that was my first video tutorial that I ever came out with, was how to crochet a Batman logo. Do I plan on dressing up for Halloween this year? Ooh, I actually haven't thought much about it, but yeah, totally. Um, I definitely should. Uh, let me think that through, but yeah, the answer is yes, I would like to dress up for Halloween. Let's see, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, nine, ten. Yeah, if you guys have any ideas, uh, I'm always looking for ideas for what to dress up for as. One time Jules and I went as, uh, I think last year, maybe or two years ago, we went as, um, I was a mime and she was a hippie and we were peace and quiet. I thought that was pretty clever. Uh, and then <laughs> a few years ago we did, um, we did, uh, the, uh, we all dressed, me and Jules and our, our, my old roommate Garrett all dressed in, um, uh, we took blue sheets and we cut high, high, eye holes out of them, so we were blue ghosts, and we were the Boo Man group, which was pretty fun. We just like went around and we like drummed on things, like the Blue Man group, but ghosts. Anyhow, I thought that was so clever. <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh oh, no, oh, no, we're good. Just doesn't look right, but. We are good. 10, and then our invisible decrease. Let's try like that. All right. So we're going about that high up. So now I'm gonna do, let's see, if we just did 66 and we wanna go down to about like this big, half the size of it. We're gonna need at least four more rounds of group decreasing. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do, I'm gonna pull my stitch marker up. After this round of decreasing, okay, so we're gonna do two rounds of, um, of single crochets. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm pulling my stitch marker up here too. Uh, so you got that, Cooper? After our last round of decreasing, now we're going to do two rounds of just single crochets around. And then after that, I think we will probably call it. So we'll do these last two rounds, and then um, I'll be back next Thursday to keep working on this. Storm changed her name. Well, I'm glad you did that. Uh, how many projects are there in your working stash that have you haven't done yet? Mine is, yeah, I think probably 30. I think I have about 30 projects that are like halfway done. Do I have a favorite pattern that I've ever made? Hmm. I don't know if I have a fa um. I go through different like waves of favorite patterns. Like, I think my favorite pattern, probably maybe the goblin, or the orc, or the ogre. I really, 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 really like those patterns a lot. Um, I just think they're so cute and cool. Um, yeah, maybe those ones. Music feels like it's loud. Is it loud? This music's so like. I feel like I'm in a tech dance club or something. Oh, the octopus is a really, really cool pattern. I, I do like that. And the squid, yeah, that, those patterns are really cool. I think after these next two rounds, sync, I think we can put that, um, this in here permanently too, but we'll try it. I probably also could have done some like texture designing as I was going through this, but we didn't, so whatever. But 
we didn't do that. We didn't do that thing that I thought would be cool. And now it's too late. I mean, we can always add texture to it later. I think I might run out of... Well, actually, no. We might make it through this entire pattern without running out of brown yarn. Which would be kind of nice. Because I think we're about... Maybe not halfway there yet, but almost halfway. Do I think I'll finish the volcano on the next live stream? Mm, probably not. Maybe. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Where are you posting them? Lachlan. Oh, need a little bit more brown yarn there. There we go. Okay. All right, so there's my first round of single crochets. Um, we'll do one more round of this, and then uh, we'll see how the base goes in, and I might just like sew it in kind of a little bit right now. I don't think we'll be able to like, hmm. yeah, I don't think we'll be able to like actively sew in the base yet. I think we'll need to do that when we have some extra yarn, maybe? I don't know. That might be the first thing that we do next live stream. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. What video games are you planning on streaming? I'm probably going to start by live streaming, like, something simple. I, I mean, I might just start with, like, Super Smash Brothers because I really like playing it and I'm pretty good at it. Um, my idea, actually, uh, Hannah, is to live stream... Uh, to live stream uh, a game like rounds of Super Smash Brothers, and do like like I don't know. See how many. Like let's say let's say I did like twenty rounds, twenty games of Super Smash Brothers in a live stream, and however many times I lose, I add those characters that I lost to, to like a like a random poll poll like a like a you know, what's it called? A wheel? And then I spin the wheel and I crochet one of those, one of the characters that I lost to. I thought that might be kind of fun. Uh, something like that. Like I do, the, I I play 20 games on the Louis Loops live stream and then, and I do that on Tuesday and then on Thursday I come to the Club Crochet channel and I crochet one of those characters that I lost to uh, on the Club Crochet live stream. So kind of like cross promotion of the channels and it just might be like a fun way to incorporate crochet into my gaming. I don't know. I'm still like noodling out around with the idea. I need to, um, I really need to get it going though. Like it's just been so much going on that I just haven't had the time to like put some effort into the live streaming setup. Um, but the idea I think is going to be Tuesday gaming's live stream and then Thursday crochet live streams and then doing patterns on the other days. Um, but yeah, I'm still figuring out the time, time things. Yeah, my, I, I definitely am very, very good at Super Smash Brothers. <laughs> I know that confidently. I, that is the, probably the game I'm best at, but only with Yoshi. I only ever play Yoshi. Okay. All right. I think this is going to be it for our crochet today. Let's put this in here. Let's actually, here's what we're gonna do. I finally got some needles. I finally got some like actual metal needles. I lost all my metal needles in the move for some, like I don't know where they went. So what I'm gonna do is I'm threading the center of this onto our needle and I'm gonna go slightly off center. Like maybe right, like this would be center, right? So we're gonna go slightly off that. So let's go like, right here and that's just because it's slightly off center in the middle here so we'll go like right there like that 
and we'll pull it through, tuck it in. Wait a sec, hold on. Just want to put a hole where that was. Okay. Put that into place. Like that. And then we'll go back down through the center with it. So can I crochet with this? Yeah, okay, this should be fine. Go back through the center and come out through the very center of our piece. Like that. And I'm gonna keep this loop just a little bit open because we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So over here, maybe like right here. Come back up that and this is just gonna be to attach it and then I'm gonna go through the little loop that I made with their center and then back through it once I get this tight in stitch marker get out of here so pull that nice and tight and then back through this one like that and pull that nice and tight and then we'll go through it one more time like right here that. And that should create just a little tiny knot, just like that. Uh, and I'm just gonna go through this, through our cardboard again, and just like kind of hide it somewhere on the outside like this. And that should hold the cardboard down pretty well. I do wanna sew the edges down a little bit better next time uh, in the next live stream, but for right now, this is gonna, this should be fine. Let's do, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna hide this end real quick. There we go. We'll just go in and out somewhere on the inside. Like that. There we go. Cut it. And that should be good. All right, so that should keep it in there and keep it relatively flat. And we'll keep working on it next live stream. Not bad though, right? We might go, we might end up doing more single crochets because it does feel like it's going like maybe a little too sharp in, but I don't know. But we can already fit, I think, a pretty good amount of dinosaurs in here. Yeah, we'll be able to fit a bunch of dinos in there. Look at that. That's not even, like, half of it. Because once it's up all the way, once it gets up to about, like, right here, then we'll call it, I mean, about, like, right there, you know? So we'll go in a little bit more. We'll just keep, actually, you know, we'll probably keep this system going. We'll probably just keep going up like this. Okay, cool. Well, let's pick a winner of the giveaway. All right. Giveaway. Switching to full screen. All right, so our giveaway. I'm going to turn off responses and export the list. And we're gonna choose someone at random. There were only 56 people that signed up for the giveaway. So you have a pretty good chance. Um, we're gonna just choose someone at random. Random number generator. All right, okay, so we're gonna choose one at random here for the giveaway. Um, and before I even do that, I do wanna say, everybody, 
Thank you so much for joining. I really, really appreciate it. I really appreciate all the feedback and just hanging out on a Thursday and crocheting. Uh, it's just really cool. So just, yeah, thank you so much for joining and thanks for crocheting with me. Um, I'll be live again next Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, continuing our volcano. But for our giveaway, the winner is, and drum roll. That's how they drum in uh, where I'm from. Uh, the winner is Maya. Maya Sobasek. Maya Sobasek. Um, I think I said it right. I hope you're in the stream. Uh, congratulations, Maya. You win. Uh, it was totally at random. It, you were the 10th person to sign up, so you might be... Oh, you are there! <laughs> congratulations, Maya. I see you in the chat. Congratulations. I will be sending you an email um, probably later tonight. Uh, and yeah, congrats. And thank you all so much for your feedback. And thank you for hanging out. And just... Yeah crocheting with me um yeah i'll see you guys next thursday and uh oh that's right actually no you hang up first oh my god stop <laughs> you hang up first no oh my god stop it tina you hang up first you're making me blush no no, Kelly, you, you do this to me every time, and it's like, it's not fair, because it's like, it's like, sh they just don't get it, the way I, it's like, you hang up first, though. <sighs> okay, bye guys, love you, see you next week, bye. I got you. No, you hang up first. <laughs>